Hi and welcome to another Forager weekly video. I'm Steve and I'm Chloe and we're here talking retail again. It's been a tumultuous few months for the retail sector, Chloe, but attention from investors at least has turned from who's going to survive to who is going to thrive in future. What's one thing that you think has changed permanently because of what's happened? The shift to online has definitely progressed a lot faster. I think what we've seen in the last couple of weeks is a few years or even maybe more of online penetration. There are a couple of examples of that in Australia. You've got Accent Group who have made four times their online sales per day compared to what they were doing prior to the lockdown. And then you've got Adairs who already had a pretty good online presence and they've tripled their online sales while their stores have been closed. So we've had this dramatic shift online, that's probably pretty obvious, but what does it mean here for the future as things go back to normal? So I think the retailers that have gained market share throughout this period are probably going to keep it. You've got retailers like Hallenstein Glass and Holdings, one of the international fund stocks, who were already prepared for something like this. They had built some new fulfillment centres in Sydney and Christchurch and upgraded their facilities in Auckland in preparation for the shift online. So while they've had a significant increase in demand, they've been able to increase their capacity as well. Consumer, consumers have still had a great experience with the brand and I think they'll remember that. You can contrast that with Cotton On, which is another Australian retailer. This is purely anecdotal, but if you go on their Instagram, Every single photo has hundreds of comments talking about people who have placed their orders months ago and they've received nothing from the brand. I don't think consumers are going to forget. So fortune favours the prepared. Chloe's talked in some of our recent videos as well about the changing nature of business models in retail land and some of the fast fashion is a loose term but businesses that are able to change their their offerings very quickly versus those that aren't how has this environment affected that dynamic so i think people get confused about fast fashion it's almost used like a dirty word people think that it means a consumer buys a product for dirt cheap wears it once and then throws it away but fast fashion is actually meant to mean getting a product from design onto your shelves quickly. So retailers that have, have that kind of inventory model are much better placed. An example is Boohoo in the UK. They've got a six week turnaround on their products, which means they were able to respond really quickly to the changing demand. That's a stark contrast to your traditional retailers who plan their ranges months in advance. As soon as the stores reopen, they're going to have so much stock that's six months old and they're going to have to clear it out somehow. So there you go. Again, the new, more modern businesses have thrived where some of the old school retailers have struggled again. It sounds pretty bleak, Chloe, for some of the, the businesses that have been left behind. And I'd say even for someone starting a new business today, it's got to be hard to replicate a big online presence and all of the distribution skills that you need to do that. Is there any hope for the newcomers? I think there is. Smaller retailers have been using platforms for a while now, such as Amazon or Zalando, where they list their products and they use those platforms purely for the eyeballs that they bring. Some of the platforms are now expanding that kind of offering. Next, a UK retailer has introduced Next Total Platform, where they take care of the website, the backend, fulfillment and distribution for the retailer and it kind of leaves them to do the stuff that they enjoy such as design and brand image. I think that gives a bit more of a competitive advantage to those smaller retailers especially in times like this because it means that their cost base is purely variable and they can adjust it when their sales decline. So like all ecosystems the big might have an advantage today but it will adapt and we may see more new nimble competitors with a fairly low cost of doing business in future. That's been great. Thanks, Chloe. Appreciate your time and we'll be back next week. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.